Hey readers, my name is Brittany Peters. I'm with the Rowan Public Library and in honor of this year's star party, I'm gonna give you some book recommendations today. We're gonna to start with fiction. The first one we're gonna talk about is the Expanse series by James S.A. Corey. The first one's called Leviathan Wakes. Yes, this is the same series that The Expanse, the TV show on Amazon Prime is actually based off of this book series. And of course the book is always better, so get on it. Uh, essentially, what happens is there's two Han Solo, James Dean type characters who are too cool for school and have this tortured past, and they get dragged into this war between Mars, Earth, and the asteroid belt that they don't really want anything to do with, but of course, our natural leaders have a great crew, there's good drama, it's a mystery, it pulls you in like that and this is a really good one for people who love Star Wars it's also a really good one for people who aren't really used to science fiction or that maybe this is kind of you dipping your toe into the genre this would be a good one for you because it there's not a lot of jargon you don't have to know a lot about space or spaceships or anything like that in order to get into this series this is a really good one the next one I'm going to tell you about is actually a grief memoir. This is uh, The Smallest Light of the Universe by Sarah Seeger. Uh, Sarah, I say Sarah like we're friends, I guess we are, I feel like we are after I read this, uh, essentially is a planet scientist and she loses her husband, he dies. And now she's a single mom, two kids, her world's turned upside down, devastated. So she uses her work and her passion really um, of space to navigate her grief, the big black hole of space to navigate her grief. So it's a beautiful metaphor, really, of how to look at space as a possibility as opposed to a black hole. She, it's a really great story of human connection, how to process these hard things, how to forgive yourself when you're struggling to process those things, um, and how to kind of still look up at the sky and wonder um, with joy as opposed to sadness and bitterness. So great story. Anybody who's lost somebody can relate to this, and it's a, uh, it's a good one even if you don't really like space. Great, great memoir. The next one I'm going to talk to you about is one that you are going to want to hold and hug after you finish because you're going to love it that much. This is Sia Martinez and the Moonlit Beginning of Everything by Raquel Vasquez Gilliland. Now, Sia Martinez is beautiful for several reasons. First of all, the writing is poetic. It's a coming of age story. It's action packed, handles contemporary issues, and then you throw some aliens in there, which of course, what, who can, how do you get better than that? Sia Martinez lights a prayer candle in the Arizona desert between two saguaro cacti, great already, right? every night for her mother who's been missing for three years to find her way home one night she looks up from the candle and an alien spaceship lands in front of her and who's on it her mama crazy so the other reason sia martinez is amazing is because if you think of a loved one or a memory you have a love of a loved one like for me it would be my grandmother she died six years ago when i think of her i think of sitting at the kitchen table in her house eating salmon biscuits, laugh if you need to, deep south people know what I'm talking about. You're sitting there, I know, her member, I know her hair, I know her apron, I know her countertops, I know what it smells like, I know how I feel, I know all of that, what it feels like, what her skin feels like, everything, right? That it's warm, it's like a warm blanket. Reading this book, reading Sia Martinez, makes you feel like you're sitting at that table with your loved one. It makes you feel like you are having this conversation and, and, and then everything somehow is going to be okay. It's powerful. So highly, highly recommend. You won't regret it. The last book I'm going to talk to you about is actually a graphic novel. Don't let the label fool you. Graphic novels are not all comics. They're not all superheroes. There's lots of deep things that happen in graphic novels. And honestly, in some ways it's harder because they have to cover a lot more with both illustrations and a small amount of text. So give it a try. This would be a great one to start with if you've never done a graphic novel before. This is called On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. This is her second work actually. Her first one was more of a memoir for her as an ice skater and kind of as a coming of age story. This is also a coming of age story and this one takes place uh, in space with uh, Mia as a 13 year old and then as like a 19 year old. So it's a really cool because you see the coming of age part for her as she's a teenage girl, which you know is very intense. It's hard to kind of see past the next weekend. Um, there's just a lot of things going on, navigating crushes, bullies, trying to get on this sports team called Lux, which is kind of like Quidditch in space. Um, there's all of these things. Then you see her as an adult and she works with this group of engineers who go to these architectural landmarks 
uh, to revitalize them. So that's another layer of this that's really cool is that you kind of get to see these landmarks in this futuristic setting. Um, so it's cool to see those two things together. And then she kind of uses that as another way to help me kind of work through her trying to figure out who she is, right? Which we all struggle with. So great, beautiful novel. The illustrations are amazing, stunning, captivating. You won't be disappointed. Well, that's all I have for you for today. I hope you found something that you liked, something that you want to try. If you hated them all, that's okay. Come see us at the library. We would love to find something in another genre that maybe you want to try. And we hope to see you soon. Till next time.